Okay, so this is the tutorial on hierarchical clustering using orange. And I am going to start with a fresh blank canvas in orange. And I am going to upload the data, which is the data that I'm going to use is on canvas. And it is a um, So on Canvas, I'm showing you where the data that we're using is. It's under, um, again, this is my development version. It's not going to look like yours, but the title of the data I'm using is Tutorial Underline Hierarchical Underline Measurements. And I don't remember where I got this data from, but I have it from somewhere. So we're going to start with the CSV file import, and then we're going to load the data. And... This data looks like this. Now this is honestly, it's four measurements and I don't actually know where these came from. They're just like, it's just a set of four measurements, which actually for cluster analysis is kind of what you want. So it's basically like, I don't have any idea what the structure of this data is. So I have four measurement variables. Um, each of them are on 20 observations, but I know absolutely nothing else about this data. So it is kind of like a perfect example of when you would want to use cluster analysis is in a situation when you're looking to find the structure of the data. So starting with data that you don't know anything about is perfect. So this is data with four measurements. And again, always remember to set the data types. These are all quantitative variables, numeric. So I'm just gonna set them all to numeric. But if you don't do that, then nothing else is gonna run because orange is gonna be like, I don't know what to do with the data. Okay, so that should be all set. And then next what I want to do is I want to standardize these using my pre-processing and normalizing widget, widget because they are not on a standard scale. So I'm going to run this through the pre-processing widget. And I'm going to check normalized features. This seems to always be set to standardize and I just never touch it. Um, that and then it's helpful always to look at the data. I don't necessarily always look at it just to make sure that it looks like what it should. And it does. So this is the four measurements that are all standardized and it's basically totally meaningless data because it has no like it has no categorical variables and no description of what the data is. But it's four normalized measurements and so I want to cluster it and see if there's any patterns in this data. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do is do distances. That again is under unsupervised. So I'm going to use the distance widget and I'm going to run the pre-process data through the distance widget. Okay. Now distances, if you click on it, it doesn't do anything because it's just, it's just a function that takes the data in and puts it out, but there's nothing displayed or anything. So I'm going to run this on Euclidean um, as a metric, which is basically the default. Pretty much everything will be run on Euclidean. Unless the only thing like for your projects, if you want to, if you have like all binary data, you might want to do um, the jacker as discussed in the lecture. So um, that might work for you. They're just different metrics of calculating distances. You can do a little research and see exactly how they work. The Euclidean just works like the Pythagorean theorem, distance distance formula from high school type classes. So okay. So um, next, I want to look at the distance matrix just to see what it looks like. Okay. And so because I have 20 observations, which isn't a very big data set, I have a pretty big distance matrix. Now you can just imagine um, once you get like anything much bigger than this, looking at the distance matrix is just, it, you know, the possibilities of what you can do with your little human brain um, sort of, you know, you, you need like other tools and, and stuff other than just looking at this with your eyes because, um, it just becomes too big, at least for me. I mean, maybe like you young, smart people can like look at these things. So this is our distance matrix and you can see not much from this. There's just all the distances. And in order to, I mean, part of why we need clustering is we need to take these distances and what the clustering will do, um, we're going to run the hierarchical clustering and that will begin with creating clusters of the 
um, smallest distances. So it looks to me like six and seven is probably the smallest distance that I see on here. So this is going to like group together. Agglomerative hierarchical clustering is going to group things together by first taking like six and seven and then grouping them. And then it's going to calculate from there like cluster, 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 as I, I did this in lecture and I illustrated just the little circles. Um, and then like they'll incorporate more and more and so your clusters grow. And finally, at the end of agglomerative hierarchical clustering, you have one big cluster um, that was created from grouping and grouping and grouping and grouping. And then you can visualize that with the dendrogram, which is what we're going to do. Okay. So next I'm gonna run the hierarchical clustering algorithm, okay? And I'm going to do that. Um, these are just for viewing things. So this, I'm going to move these a little bit out of the way. So I'm going to want to run my clustering. Um, and I'm going to want to run hierarchical clustering. Okay. That is under unsupervised. And so the hierarchical clustering, I'm going to run this. Oh, I didn't realize you could actually view this from here. Oh, cool. So the hierarchical clustering you actually can view um, directly from here, which is good. Um, okay, cool. Um, there is a tree view thing, but that is for decision trees, not for hierarchical clustering. So um, the dendrogram is right here, and you can see um, how this works. So this there should be 20. On the right side, there should be 20 lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So these represent each of the individual observations. And then what you see is grouping and grouping and grouping, taking the smallest ones and putting them together, which I bet this is the 6 and 7. Um, I want to also annotate this by... Um, Oh, there is no, you know, there is no observation number in this one, so I can't like do anything much fancier. So it would have actually been super helpful in this data if there had been a fifth column that had like identifier 1 to 20, but there isn't one, so I can't show you that. But anyway, so this is probably, um, the, this is the closest to, and then you can see how these get grouped into this and like this might be considered one cluster and you can kind of highlight on this and play with it. I mean clustering is very very um, high level so you don't really um, you don't really get like a perfect picture of what's going on. You sort of, you know, you can look at, you really have to sort of look and iterate and interpret like what does this mean, what does this mean, um, you know, where are the distinct clusters. So it looks to me like this is an initial cluster and this is an initial cluster and this is maybe this one. And then you kind of have to work back and forth with your data to make a lot more sense out of these. Um, you can prune them, but I don't, we're not gonna bother pruning them at this point. You can color them by um, different clusters. Um, I don't know what that's actually doing because it's not coloring anything. Um, Hang on a second. Okay. M2 C1. Okay. okay. Distances. There's something wrong with this. Oh. Um, annotations none. Annotations none. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so it doesn't like that. Okay. Distances were all set. I'm trying to get it to color the clusters. Okay. So this is called I mean this is called a dendrogram. I've often seen it misspelled. There is an R. It's D E N D R O G R A M. And so I kind of like these better when they're like top to bottom versus left to right like this, but orange for some reason never um, as far as I know, there's no way to do this, like top to bottom. So on the right here, these are the individual data points. And then you see the agglomeration going right to left, starting with the individual data points. This is the first one and so forth. Over here, what you can do is you can sort of play around with where it's sort of defining clusters. So this is the like 
full height, but what you do with this height ratio is this. So this I think is probably a good, like these are probably like true clusters. And so I'm just, all this thing is doing is like moving this bar like in the middle. I don't know if you can interact. Oh, you can, nice. Um, so you can actually interact with it this way. Now you wouldn't want to cluster, like I'm starting like with, literally watch the, the dotted bar. Um, this is the individual data points. And so this is the first clustering. Um, these are not observation numbers. These are cluster one to cluster 19. Um, oh, there's 20. Yeah, there's 20 in the middle. Okay, cool. Um, so as I go through, this is the first joining and then the next joining and the next joining and the next joining and the next joining and the next joining. That to me seems like probably a good like cluster cut there. Um, where you actually like cut the horizontal, um, this is usually a horizontal line. So where you would actually make the cut in terms of whether you have real clusters, that's totally dependent on you. Um, here you might do this as a cluster or this or this. Um, at this point, once you get all the way out here, then you're just talking about like joining the whole data set together. So you want to go somewhere between like the individual data points and like the whole thing all grouped together because the, your whole point is to sort of divvy it into groups, which considering it all one group, well, that's not doing that. So where do you actually like draw the cut? I mean, I think this is like, you, you know, I would go back and investigate like these three and these four and these four because um, it looks like there's some kind of legitimate clustering and similarities with these, um, possibly out here. But again, this is all dependent on like understanding the data maybe out here, but once you start getting like here, um, it, it depends on the context of the data. Certainly this is no longer like a distinct cluster. This is just the whole agglomeration. Um, so that is like, and, and you can annotate the right side with the variable names. Now these variables, honestly, they're just measurements. So I don't know. Um, you would, you would actually want to have like some categorical variables and some stuff to look at here to actually sort of determine your clusters. Um, but that is a basic hierarchical clustering and a basic dendrogram. And so again, it's a very exploratory technique. So you want to look at your data and sort of play with it. There is for you, um, there will be a discussion video. It's not the most like super interesting guy. But he does this customer segmentation and he actually goes through and sort of analyzes one of these. Um, so this teaches you at least basically how to do it in orange. But to actually see one sort of in action is kind of a little bit more exciting. Um, the other thing on here that I want you to, to look at is this, the linkage metrics. So when you have individual data points, when you're here, um, at the individual data point level, you start with just distances between the individual data points. That uses the distance matrix and the distance stuff. But when you start agglomerating, you then have the issue of you're no longer looking at distances of individual points, you're looking at cluster to cluster differences. And so linkage refers to how the cluster to cluster differences are calculated. Okay. And so as discussed in the lecture, there are different metrics for linkage. And I have to tell you the truth, I forgot the specifics of them because I don't really um, pay that much attention to this. But if you use different linkages, you will get different clustering. Um, you'll start the same, but your clustering will change. Um, to me, this looks like the same one that was moved down there, but um, your cluster patterns will vary sometimes tremendously, sometimes not so much depending on um, what linkage metric you use. The difference between these metrics is like, um, some of them use like the points that are furthest apart as like the cluster distance. Some of them use the points that are closest. Some of them use the average. Um, this one ward is somewhat popular. And actually, I think this one actually has a nice clustering for this one. Um, I have to tell the truth. I don't know how word, word linkage actually calculates things. Um, but this one does seem to be popular and it actually looks to me like it's a really nice um, divides the data into four pretty distinct clusters. So that might be something to consider. But the different linkage metrics you use can have a, a huge implication on the clustering. Um, this is actually pretty good, I think, or, or this. Um, so this is actually taking the data and doing like three kind of nice clusters using the ward linkage. 
Um, so that is something to note that different linkages, you get different things. And what is an optimal clustering to you depends on the context and going back and forth with the data. And that's something that you'll see in that market segmentation video. Um, so this is a good example of a really basic hierarchical clustering. Again, it's very exploratory. Um, if you take like stats two or something, you can tell the, like, there's a huge difference between using like statistical techniques that are based on distributions and versus this sort of like exploratory data mining stuff. But it's fun. So that is the basic tutorial on the hierarchical clustering using orange. Um, and on the homework, what I ask you to do, oh, I didn't look at the homework yet. So the homework is on Canvas and you're going to do these. There are two of them for you. Um, the tutorial I'm going to move up here and put under this video. But so there's two of these. I believe there's 10 questions. Yes. And so um, you're going to work with these 10 questions and pretty much the same thing. There's just two hierarchical clusterings for you to do on the two data sets. Again, some of it is subject to interpretation. So, you know, I'm kind of grading this more on that you're doing it rather than quote correct answers. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is your basic intro to hierarchical clustering. It's somewhat fun, but it's not um, the sort of scientificness of it is not there like it is in other techniques and statistics. Okay, thanks.